Hello everyone, this is Amir from Audio Science Review, uh, back again with a product review. This is actually an appetizer for a uh, uh, more general topic around AC mains and, and uh, noise and distortion, which uh, with any luck I'll record after this one. So after you watch this, uh, you may want to tune to that uh, uh, video and article. But here I've got a product, uh, the AudioQuest Niagara 1200. It's a uh, audio, uh, sorry, it's an AC mains conditioner or filter and a surge protector. These things come with a number of different names. Um, it's a pretty large box. I've got it packed, unfortunately, so I can't show it to you, but it's wide. I mean, it's wider than most, uh, than many stereo equipment and quite heavy, which is nice because uh, when you plug things into it, uh, hopefully it won't move. Uh, in my case, it was still sliding around, but maybe if you have it on a wooden table, it wouldn't do that. Uh, the owner that sent it to me also sent two of these uh, beefy power cords uh, from them. Uh, I think the model number, yeah, NRG-Z3. The company recommends these cables, so it was nice to have these cables and, and uh, remove uh, an excuse for uh, the results not being representative. Uh, there was a long cable, two meter one, I think, and a one meter one. Uh, and if you add up all these things, you get about $1,400 uh, in, in you know, about $1,500 in cost for this setup. Um, what I do, which is kind of unusual, but it makes a lot of sense, is that before I actually power anything uh, through these boxes, I analyze them as if they're a black box. After all, AC goes into them and AC comes out. And without looking at the circuits, we can actually characterize what it's doing. Specifically, we can characterize what filtering is doing, which is their claim to fame. They all say they reduce noise and distortion. So I hooked it up to my audio analyzer and uh, using probes, I'm uh, testing what happens when I feed the, uh, uh, just the signal from my audio precision analyzer into this AC outlet and then measuring what comes out. It's lower than mains voltage, but this device doesn't care what the voltage is um, as far as filtering is concerned. And uh, the blue line is the response of uh, audio precision by itself, just measuring itself. As you can see, it's flat line to well past 100 kilohertz. And then when I hook up the Niagara uh, 1200 with the, either its low current outlets, it has these outlets over here that are lower current and it's got a couple of high current ones. Both low current and high current ones produce this uh, graph that you see in red. It's actually green and red. And so what this says is that there's no filtering at all till you get past 100 hertz, 200, even when you get to one kilohertz, only half a dB of reduction. Uh, if you pick 3 dB as sort of the, you know, sort of engineering standard of where the filtering starts, it's about 5 kilohertz. So below 5 kilohertz, the filtering is not that substantial. And uh, above that, the filtering increases. The company claims that it has constant filtering across all frequencies. And I can see that that is approaching an asymptote where it's flattening out. I don't understand why they think that's a good idea. If a little bit of filtering is good, a lot of filtering is better. So why would you want to filter less? The designer claims that uh, this is an audible thing, that you don't want to sort of filter some of the spectrum and not others. But these are all well above hearing range. So uh, you know, it's not in the hearing range. That, that would make sense. But outside of hearing range, seems to me you want to filter a lot more than five decibels, which is all we're seeing in here. You want to filter 20, 30, 40 dB, uh, what have you. But at any rate, um, we have existence proof that we can fully quantify what this device is doing as far as filtering. So the notion that we can't measure these things is, is completely false. Uh, it's trivial to measure it, and then you can see that we are seeing the measurement and it is doing something. So it's not just like a power cord or something you get that you measure this and it shows no difference. This device is indeed filtering uh, the uh, whatever is above uh, five kilohertz or so, a few kilohertz it filters. Below that has negligible filtering. Uh, as a trivial matter, our mains frequency is 50, 60 hertz. You don't want to filter any of that because that's where the juice is coming from. That is the mains feed that comes into your home. So uh, you don't want to filter that. But an ideal filter would filter everything above 50 or 60 hertz and leave nothing there. So basically it would be a brick wall over here and go all the way out here. And even below 50, 60 hertz would, you know, output nothing. Such a filter is extremely expensive and difficult to build. 
um, because you're talking very high voltages and very steep uh, frequency response. And uh, so that's why, as a practical matter, you get filters that mostly are filtering inaudible things. Anyway, um, we don't listen to AC uh, mains. Uh, I don't know anybody who takes the AC cable and sticks to their ear and says, wow, that sounds good, this doesn't sound good. <laughs> so we care about what comes out of our audio devices. Uh, manufacturers, of course, wants us, want us to focus on you know, noise filtering and everything, making you think that this filtering one-to-one -one applies to your output. Well, the reality is not that, but we don't want to assume that we want to measure it. So I took my topping A90 uh, headphone amplifier and preamplifier. Uh, it's on my desk. I didn't pick it for any specific reason other than it is state of the art. It is the highest resolution, lowest noise and distortion device there is that I've measured in this class. And uh, when we measure it, you can see why. Um, the distortion here is minus 140 decibels. Uh, best case threshold of hearing relative to 120 dB playback is about minus 115. So we're way below that. We're 20, 30 dB below um, uh, our threshold of hearing uh, with respect to hearing these harmonic distortions. And uh, uh, so this device with a generic power cord needs no help. Uh, it's properly designed. The engineers know that AC mains is never clean and you better clean that up, make it into DC and use that. But maybe, you know, better can be had. So I went ahead and uh, uh, the two tests. One is that I continue to use a generic AC cable that I have, a no-name random one. But I hooked it up to Niagara 1200 and just to see the benefit of the box itself. And it shows no benefit. The cyanide was 120 dB before and it's 120 dB now. So this distortion was minus 140 before, it's minus 40 now. Everything looks the same. I mean, these numbers, even down to like, you know, four or five decimal places are, are absolutely not changed. So keep in mind that we're not just looking at a few numbers in here. We have a full spectrum over here of noise and everything. We actually see a little bit of a 60 hertz hum in here, which didn't go away. It didn't get changed. There's another one over here. It's a harmonic of it at 120 hertz. That didn't go away. So not a thing changed with this level of precision error instrumentation down to minus 160 dB we're seeing absolutely nothing. There's no variation. But maybe there's some magic to their power cords. i hook up the power cords by now. Hopefully you can guess what the story is like in that it made no difference whatsoever with their power cords either. So the performance of this device was superb before and is superb now. And this box, by the way, costs, I think, five or $600. So it's cheaper than getting this uh, uh, $1,400, uh, you know, a uh, box to filter AC, uh, where you could put your money towards a box like this that doesn't need to filter AC. But, uh, you know, you might say, well, you know, is the device doing anything, uh, doing any cleanups? Um, so I did another test, and this is a tricky test. Please don't go try to replicate this yourself unless you're an electrical engineer and you understand what you're doing. In that I took the AC mains that, uh, you know, goes into this and comes out, and using a special differential probe um, that divides the voltage by a factor of 100 and then fed that to my audio precision. Uh, the reason you want to do that is that the uh, AC mains 120 volts uh, RMS, the peaks are 160, 170 volts, and it would blow up the audio analyzer. So that's why I'm saying do not go try this at home and hook it up to some sound card or some other uh, instrument without understanding what you're doing. Even if you have a scope and everything, this is a very dangerous test, so please don't attempt to do it. Uh, this probe I'm using is differential, and the nice thing about differential probe is that it doesn't pick up a noise from around, the, you know, ex extra noise that's not there, so from lights and other things. So it's a very clean feed to the differential inputs of the audio precision. So if I just hook that up to my uh, AC mains that I power everything with, my computer, my audio precision analyzer, the devices I'm testing, this is what, the, what it looks like. Um, here you see what, what we call the time domain. This is a sine wave. You can see actually the corners are kind of distorted. I'll show you in a second. Uh, well, actually, I don't know if I have a clean one in this one. I'll show you in the next video. But the video is the uh, waveform is actually a little bit deformed. It looks like a sine wave, but these peaks are not very clean. And the reason it's not very clean is that if we look at the spectrum of this, if we uh, apply a Fourier transform to it, we see that our mains uh, is at 60 hertz. We're, I'm in US, so we have 60 hertz uh, AC mains. 
And an ideal power source would just have that and nothing else. Of course, not an ideal power source. The power line going through miles and miles of wiring and does whatever it wants to do. So it comes to us distorted, and the distortion is fairly horrendous. You can see I've got harmonic distortion in here and some noises over here that are modulating. So not a pretty picture. Um, to the audio analyzer, though, this looks like audio equipment. Really, this could be an amplifier I'm measuring with a 60 hertz uh, tone feeding to it. So we can do our normal uh, computations on it, like THT plus noise, which is what's the harmonic energy plus the noise energy uh, summed together. And it's almost 2%, 1.9%. We can convert it even to synad, like I do with my amplifier and DAC measurements. And the synad is only 34 dB. Uh, up here, you saw the synad of my topping was 120. So clearly AC power is not very clean compared to a state-of-the-art audio equipment, but there it is. Um, so then I did the same test. This time I, I'm probing what comes out of the uh, um, Audio Quest Niagara 1200 with all these power cords and everything in here and the low current outlets, which I assume does more filtering. And guess what happened to the uh, harmonic distortion and noise? Uh, nothing, you know, they're basically 1.89% and before it was 1.9%, the waveform is still not very clean and all the harmonic distortion, everything is there. Why is this the case? Well, I already showed you why that is the case. Remember I said these things filter mostly high frequencies and they leave this part of the spectrum between 60 hertz and one or two kilohertz alone, basically. But, you know, bad luck that we have, or they have, is that we're, what is all of our noise and distortion? It's all between 60 hertz and one kilohertz. That's where the tallest and most polluting spikes are. Uh, you can try to filter this stuff way down here, uh, 20, 30, 40, 50 kilohertz and higher, but that's not going to reduce the total picture. It's like... Uh, you know, I don't know if you drop a salt water you you put in a pool is not going to make it salty. So, you know, if you want to filter AC mains, you need to filter all of these, uh, you know, objectionable spikes in here. And this box simply can't do it. And none of them can. As I said, the, the size of the machine, the expense of something that can filter down to 50, 60 hertz is just horrendous. You're just not going to get that. And there's really no reason to have it, as I've shown you, that, you know, that our equipment knows how to handle this. Uh, people always come back and say, but but what did it sound like? Did you listen to it? It's a silly question. It's like, I, um, you know, a measurement show it makes no difference whatsoever. But, you know, I listen because people sort of complain if I don't. So as it happens, this time I started listening with, with uh, Niagara 1200 and all these power cords powering my uh, topping A90 as a starting baseline. And then I switched to the generic cheap, you know, two dollar AC cord. And as soon as I switched cables to the generic one, the generic one sounded better. <laughs> it wants to ask is like, wait a second, what made the generic cable sound better? It really wasn't any better. But the way your brain works is that, you know, when you first listen to something as your baseline, you're like, yeah, 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 I know, I know what that sounds like. Then you plug in the second one and you start focusing and paying attention, and all of a sudden you hear more detail and sounds higher fidelity. And uh, despite all the knowledge I had, by the way, of how this thing worked, I had just done all the measurements, the brain still plays that trick on you. You know, I heard that it's, the generic cable sounded better. What's even more impressive is that when I hooked it back up to Niagara and going back to that, it didn't sound as good. So uh, just know that this, these, th these perceptions, you know, that your, bra your brain's perception is just subject to so much error on this thing that even the knowledge of that it, you shouldn't hear a difference wasn't enough for me to not hear. So I'm tra being transparent and telling you this, uh, know that this is why I say subjective assessments and a lot of reviews for audio are just total bogus. Please don't, don't you know, pay attention to them. They're good for entertainment, but not much else. So what do we conclude? First, you know, beyond the device, we, we first conclude that the people do audio reviews uh, just s spitting out imagination. I, I don't know where, you know, they don't know the first things about, you know, proper evaluation of something that is 
supposed to make a small difference in that you want to do that test in blind in a controlled environment. Don't just plug it in and let your brain just be happy that you added this box, that it filtered things. Therefore, the filtering must have reduced noise floor. Therefore, the dynamic range improved, veil has been removed, base is tighter, all these things that you read. They make no sense. So we have John Darker over here said he can't think of any upgrade to his audio system that's a better value than, than this $1,400 uh, $1, gadget. The fact that it makes no difference whatsoever, <laughs> clearly it's not the best value. It's the worst value. Spent $1,400, some that made no uh, uh, difference. Uh, Herb uh, Reichert from, uh, I think that's how you pronounce his last name, uh, from Stereophile. Um, it's the single most high value component of ever auditioned uh, for stereophile. Well, shoot, I think you need to go get a better, you know, day job or night job, whichever one it is, uh, because this device does not do anything. If they think it does, all you gotta do is turn your back to it, have somebody switch it 10 times in a row, either switch or not switch to another AC uh, source and write down a quick log and show that to us, you know? So these guys know how to use a video camera. John does a whole bunch of video, YouTube videos. Just turn your back and, you know, show us a video how you can tell 10 out of 10 times what a dramatic difference it makes. Until you do that, you know, yes, I heard the difference too, although wasn't in favor of this box. Um, so that's the lesson number one. Please don't listen to the read and, you know, pay attention to what, what these subjective reviewers say. They're good people, friendly people, great in front of camera, some of them like John is. But really, they're, they don't understand how you test audio equipment and uh, to just mislead with these statements. Um, the other thing you don't want to listen to is the designer. Uh, they've got this video on their homepage for this device. And uh, when you uh, watch him, he, you know, there's a lot of generic comments he makes, you know, that, you know, the electricity is old, 100 year old technology, as if that's got anything to do with anything. Uh, and that all these sources of noise and RF are terrible. And it's like, no, they're not terrible <laughs> because we don't hear them. And anything's the high frequency that we don't hear, we're blessed with ears that don't go up to one megahertz, let alone to two or three, four gigahertz where Wi Fi and things like that are. And uh, so you filtering those things does us no good. And by the way, if you're filtering it, show us the measure. There are no specs, there's no measurements, and nothing for this device. I've shown you as simple as this to make a measurement of its filtering capabilities, show that. But he makes a remarkable statement about audio that he says uh, something to the effect of uh, the AC mains can distort or mask up to one third of your lo low level content. Really, uh, that's a remarkable statement to make, considering that it makes absolutely no difference electrically in the audio band. And uh, there, he's got that thing called a white paper, some obscure test that they've thrown together, which it just strains imagination on this thing. Um, note that there are benefits to these devices, potentially. This is also a search protection device. And if by odd chance you are hearing audible noise and ticks and pops, maybe this device helps you, maybe it makes it worse. You don't know. But I'm not evaluating these things as, a, as an AC electrical device. If you have bad wiring in your house and you hook one of these things up, maybe it makes it better. Maybe you add hum and then you, you know, added this, got better. I don't know. Um, but if you don't have an audible problem, you listen to your stereo and it's quiet and it's playing, uh, don't go adding this box to it. You don't have a problem. Uh, if you have a problem, you'll know it because it'll make noises. Uh, one thing about psychoacoustics is that, um, our hearing sensitivity is very, very poor in low frequencies. Uh, we don't really get sensitive to about uh, two to three kilohertz. And so a lot of devices could actually output junk like this and you don't hear it. Indeed, just about every amplifier I test has a lot of power supply noise and you don't hear them in low frequencies. You may hear the hiss and everything at higher frequencies, but you don't hear them at low frequencies. So that's another strike against them. But uh, it's a shame that, uh, you know, they put out a video with this extremely misleading comment. Uh, all they got to do is show us a, you know, blind test. And, uh, you know, if the difference, if one third of the music has been taken out, you should be able to tell. Um, uh, it's remarkable that those of us who don't have this device must be missing one third of our music. I mean, can we really believe that one third of our low level detail of our music is thrown out? Anybody who doesn't have a box like this and we don't know it? 
anyway, <laughs> we could raise our blood pressure on this kind of thing. Um, as a whole, I'm fine with you buying this box. It seems to be well built. It's a substantial piece of equipment. It's got non-sacrificial surge protection. Uh, I've looked at the wiring inside, a little bit unhappy about the way he's they wired this stuff up to make it look pretty as opposed to be a little bit more functional. But uh, but otherwise, uh, uh, you know, I don't have anything bad to say as a surge protector. There are much cheaper devices you can get than this, but if you want the look of this thing, uh, Go ahead and spend a thousand dollars. The power cords I don't recommend. My gosh, these things look like they're going to rip out the AC sockets out of your uh, devices. They dangle. I'm not sure they even make a good connection because they torque the device so much that uh, I think it's just uh, you know unhealthy for your device, let alone your pocketbook. But they still work. Their AC cords, they pass AC. So uh, you know, as a straight device, it's fine. Just forget about the audio uh, claims that these companies make. As I mentioned, there's another video coming up after this. Uh, it's about the whole general area of uh, noise and distortion on AC and uh, some cool experiments uh, that take this uh, kind of review to the next level. So see you in that video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.